Hai assalamualaikum semua Chris and my lovely friends We are Abu, Najat, Aina, Shafika and Hidayah from MAC 2208D We hope you enjoy our presentation On this lovely evening, we will present on topic 3 which is audit risk materiality and sampling The first subtopic is audit planning so, what are the steps before you accept audit engagement? First, you need to evaluate your client's business. Second, you need to consider how ethical you are as an auditor. And the third one, you need to prepare engagement letter. There are six steps in audit planning. First, we need to understand the client's business. Second, we need to perform analytical procedures such as analysis of significant trends and ratios. Third, we need to determine which area is material and need to focus more. Fourth, identify the risk. Fifth, need to understand entity's internal control. And the last one, we need to develop audit strategies such as audit program. The second subtopic is materiality. What is materiality? Materiality is an auditor professional judgment that a misstatement of information could be material to client's financial statement. Information is material when the materiality could influence economic decisions of users taken on its financial statements. There are two measures of materiality. The first one is quantitative base, which is a percentage of total assets, revenue, profit before taxes, gross profit. The second type is qualitative factors such as control weaknesses, management turnover, high fraud risk, and others. The third subtopic is audit risk. So what is audit risk? Audit risk is the risk that an auditor expresses an inappropriate opinion on the financial statements, such as failing to emphasize significant matter in the audit report. Why audit risk model? Audit risk may be considered as the product of various risks which may be encountered during the performance of an audit. There are three types of risks in which auditor needs to assess level of risk pertaining to each component of audit risk. Audit risk model equals to inherent risk times with control risk times with detection risk. Inherent risk is a risk of a material misstatement in the financial statements arising due to error or omission other than failure of controls. For example, when an entity has complex structure of transactions, chances of inherent risk is high. Control risk is a risk that arises due to absence or failure in the internal control system of a company. For example, chances of control risk is high when an entity's segregation of duties is not well. Detection risk is a risk that the auditors fail to detect a material misstatement in the financial statements. However, this risk can be reduced by increasing number of sample transactions for detailed testing. The fourth subtopic is audit sampling. Audit sampling is the application of audit procedures to less than 100% of total population and all the items in the population have the same chance to be selected. This is to ensure that the items that selected represent the total population which enable auditors to draw their conclusion and express their opinion. What is sampling risk? Sampling risk is that the auditor's conclusion based on the sample may be different from conclusion that would be reached if a 100% examination were carried out. However, this can be reduced by increasing the sampling size. Next is non-sampling risk. It refers to factors that cause auditors to reach a conclusion other than the sampling size. For example, auditor relies on another representation on erroneous information. There are two types of audit sampling. First one is statistical sampling, which is probabilistic sampling. Second is non-statistical sampling, which is non-probabilistic or judgmental sampling. Alright, regardless of whether statistical or non-statistical, the common steps of application of sampling on audit tests are There are four steps. The first one is planning the sample size. Second is selecting the sample. Third is testing the sample, which is vouching. And the last one is evaluating the results, which is percentage of population and conclusion. Alright, there are a few methods in selecting the samples. The first one is random sampling, in which each item in the population has an equal chance of selection. The second one is systematic selection, which is also called as interval sampling. And the last one is haphazard sample, which is selection of a sample without a specific reason or structured technique. Yay, the end of topic 3. Thank you so much, Samu Chris and my friends, for lending your ears. Created using Powtoon.